I was convinced there was another 50% left in the system down. Uh -huh. And then what I didn't see coming, no one saw coming, was $30 trillion of bailout. Yeah. So. That's just kind of the story. That's been the story, not so much tobacco, but been really the story of the last 15, 16 years. It's just mm -hmm. bailout after bailout. Just do doesn't make sense. Just, yeah. just, but it's, it's like a, it's like a, a, it's like an avalanche where it's just piling up snow higher and higher and higher. And any, I, I'm a chemist. So any, yeah. any chemist will tell you when you get displaced far from equilibrium, whether we're talking earthquakes where in California, there hasn't been a big one in a long time, the stresses are building up or avalanches, snow's building up or markets, you know, overvaluations building up, you name it. Um, the return trip when it finally it's, goes back to equilibrium, when yeah. it finally wipes out the, all that excess and blows out all that potential energy and turns into kinetic energy is fast and destructive. Yeah. Now, the Fed has prevented the, the long-term destructiveness of it, but to do so, they've just created more bubbles. And so they're, they're, they just keep, I hate trite phrases. Um, I like to invite, invent my own if I can, but, but the, the can kicking metaphor, they just keep doing it. And, yeah. and so I think this next one's going to be a painful one. And I don't think it's going to be a V bounce. I don't think it's going to be one of these 50% down and then two years of 50% up and then we're back safe. I think it's going to be a Nikkei like like thing. Okay. So let's work that out. And I'm very interested in that because there's so much going on, but I do think we're at the precipice, if you would, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's like they can print so much money and that money has to, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to work this out. You're trying to think, you're trying to, you're already steel manning it a little bit just to right. see if you can make sense of it, right? Yeah, I mean, that, and that's what we've seen. I mean, why can't that go on forever, if you would? And then Inflation. Well, that's what we have right now, right? And so- Right, right. but it's finally shown up. So now it's gotten into the DNA. It's like the vaccine. It's gotten into the DNA. And, and, and so now, um, now uh, inflation expectations, the Fed always talked about inflation expectations, but people didn't understand what that meant. Uh, one Fed governor once said, since the expectations are low, there can't be inflation. I'm going, well, you're actually a moron. Um, and, but inflation expectation, the problem is because when you start planning for the rises, then they become endemic. So when you, 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 you program price hikes into your economic model, when you program price hikes into contracts that you sign with unions, when you... Then, then the prices hikes become unavoidable, and when you know restaurants stop printing out menus and they just you know they they have some digital mechanism to up it every day, um, yeah, you know then the price and and by the way inflation's not three percent. I yeah. I don't care who you are. I don't care how many degrees in economics you have. Inflation's not three percent. Yeah. So in any event, um, so inflation expectations, inflation is very real. You know, I wouldn't be shocked if it was 10. There's an interesting yeah. implication, by the way. If inflation's been running, you know, the Chapwood Index? No, go ahead. I bet this me. has been bugging me. The Chapwood Index is kind of like a shadow stats inflation index. Shadow okay. stats has been demonized by everyone who wants to pretend inflation's okay. You know, the John, uh, what's his John Williams? I think John Williams, shadow by the way, let me interrupt you. I had him a little two weeks ago, three weeks yeah. ago. What do yeah. you think inflation is? What's he put it at? He said, take what the printed inflation is. I'm, I'm going from memory here and add 8% eight, 8 to that. That's, That's about right. That's that, that. Now, now here's the, one of the problems with it. So, so Chapwood does the same thing. Chapwood takes something like the top 50 cities in the country and monitors 500 prices and doesn't have hedonic adjustments and stupid things like that that Bosk and Shove down our throats. And, uh, and just says, how much have the prices gone up? on a sort of a per unit, you know, per pound of Fritos, per pound of per gallon of milk, per right. And um 
and and they have inflation running. They've had it running double digit. Now I have a little bit of an issue with both to the extent that if you if it's really as inflationary as they both say, going back as many years, if you back calculate where the prices had to have been, you know, 20 years ago, you end up at prices that seem too low. Now, if instead of being inflation running at 10%, it's running at nine, it's amazing what a compounding difference you get. And so, so it could be just a slight error in their estimate that's causing that. Um, but, but here's the interesting thing. Well, first of all, let me hammer the Boskin guy since I picked a fight with him. Boskin Commission decided that you have to adjust for various things. One of the funniest is when they count for inflation, they, what's it called? Owner equivalent rent? Is that what yeah. they call it? Yeah. yeah, I have trouble remembering all those acronyms. They estimate the cost of housing by asking you how much you could rent your house for. Literally a survey of clowns. You have to be Melody Wright, who you should interview, by the way. You have to be Melody Wright or an expert in real estate to answer that question. Now, what they could be doing is saying, look, this is like asking the audience who want to be a millionaire. They're saying, look, if we ask 10,000 people, even though they're all clueless, they'll still get the answer right. The bell curve will center on the right place. I don't believe that. I think it's stupid. Um, you could, for example, monitor housing costs by getting Uber to give you the, uh, by giving uh, Airbnb to give you the numbers, right? There, there's better ways to do it. Right. But, but they, they do a survey, which therefore is moronic. And we use moronic a lot today as my guess. Um, they also have a thing called substitution, and they have hedonic adjustments where they say, look, your blender has more buttons on it, therefore it's actually cheaper than you think. And what they ignore is that your blender is also going to last 10% of the time of the original blenders that we all had when we were kids. They last until we're adult, unless you drop them on the floor and smash them like I did. Um, and so there's a hidden inflation that they don't count, which is accelerated depreciation. Now, we have okay. a two-year-old fridge in the Adirondacks. We had a fridge in the Adirondacks we replaced from 1939. It still ran. We replaced with a new one. There were certain reasons for it. It already appears to be broken after two years. That's yes. inflation. That's inflation. That's a factor of 20 inflation correction yeah. right there. So that I obsess over that. And I don't see any economists do, accounting for that. Maybe they do. If someone's listening and they know they do, send me a link because I want to know about it because I think the economists ignore that. Everything we buy is crap and going to crap very quickly. Yeah. And that is hidden. We know it, but yeah. the inflation metrics don't. Yeah. The other thing is they do, um, so they just hedonic adjustment. They pretend like something's better because you've got intermittent windshield wipers. Okay, fine. The newest cars have these, you know, keyless keyless shit in the car and i'm sure they're adjusting the shit out of that i hate the keyless cars i have one and i i hate it i want to be able to make a copy of the key i want to be able to turn the car on with a key i i don't want a keyless fob um it, but they'll give it huge credit um now the other thing they do is they do substitution they say look if you're eating prime rib and the price goes up and you can substitute with chicken <laughs> and, and and so you say, therefore, the cost of living is not going up as fast as, as right. if you just monitor the prices. But here's the problem. The free market, let's say prime rib is twice as much. The free market is setting the value of prime rib at twice that of chicken. Therefore, you should hedonically adjust the downgrade in the quality of your chicken by a factor of two. So hedonically, you should adjust precisely for the for the substitution which they like to use and substitution should not exist as a an inflation correction they don't care because they're morons yeah now the other thing is they quote inflation numbers at three percent i'm sorry i'm on a roll here but they infl they cite inflation numbers at three three and a half percent we all know that our own personal inflation somehow don't look like that no you go into the store you you buy, I bought a drink and a bigger than, the, you know, it's sort of like a, one of those bags of chips or something. It's too much to eat in one sitting, but, but not a big, huge monster bag. It was like $11. Yeah. Like, oh, Jimmy Ior, a good friend of mine, owns a restaurant. He can tell you exactly what the inputs are doing. I go down to the local diner. They can tell me exactly what the inputs are doing. Um, so we don't believe the numbers. Rosie Rosenberg, David Rosenberg, explained 
part of the problem the other day, which really should be a headline explanation, and economists should all do this. That is, he said there's there's several kinds of inflation. He says there's sticky inflation. Those are the things that are going to go up no matter what is happening to the economy. Best example I can think of is postage. The, the price of stamps yeah. will never go down, right? right? And there's other things like that that won't go down. And he says, although that influences your life, it has no economic content in it. Because if you monitor that price, it's not telling you where the economy is accelerating or slowing. What you want to do is monitor the things where if it's accelerating, the price goes up. And if it's the economy slowing, the price goes down. 